So in this video, we're gonna go ahead and set up the Stripe uh, setup for the form that's gonna end up being on this screen. The logic here is I wanna add, like we could do something like Stripe checkout where it just goes to another URL, you pay and you come back. But in this case, I wanna have it embedded. So we're gonna use Stripe elements to do such a thing. That is more involved, so there's a lot more to take care of. But it is you know, more approachable than many other formats of making this work. So I'd recommend checking out Stripe's docs Stripe elements in particular. Uh, there's a new called, I think it's Stripe payment method or something, I forget now. It's like, you could use pre-built checkout, I use the custom pay, like version. And I'm just gonna go through how I did it. Feel free to tweak it completely. It's called the payment element, I totally butchered it. But that is what we'll be using. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Let's go into first set up Stripe, essentially. I've already added my secret keys, API keys to my Rails credentials. So if you run this command right here, assuming you're using VS Code, um, it should go ahead and open your VS Code as the editor and allow you to edit those credentials. I set them up in such a way that looks like, uh, it's like Stripe, it's YAML format that I said secret key, public key, and then one called W, webhook signing secret, which we'll need for processing payments at the end uh, and doing stuff after they've hit a certain status uh, on Stripe. So this is how it looks in my credentials file. Of course, there's long strings of keys there. I'm not gonna show them because it's, I mean, it's just a, just a dummy account. I don't really care, but it is something I just don't like showing on screen. So feel free to do that right now. I'd recommend it. Um, and if you followed along with installing Rails and doing the template version of this. I've already installed the Stripe gem. If you haven't installed that, go ahead and install it now. Uh, you could do it like a, the old bundle add Stripe if you want to do it that way. Core thing we need to do is think about elements as a new way of uh, rendering it on a particular view. And it's going to mean we're going to have to do a little more JavaScript with this. And first things first is to load the Stripe.js library on our head tag. Right now I commented out in my template, just in case you don't need it. I recommend loading that one, You're gonna need it. So we'll get that loaded up. And then what I will do in the, in the head of this file is actually display our public key from Stripe in a meta tag. It's gonna save us some time, just always being able to fetch that in our page anywhere we are in the app. And this can be publicly you know, shown, so it's not like a security flaw but we just say content equals, and then I'll go and fetch it from my keys. So Rails application credentials, this is how you access it. And you could just do like the dot notation object oriented route, route but I like to kind of have a graceful uh, path, I guess you could say. So if it doesn't find it, the whole page doesn't break. Um, so let's, uh, I think I have something wrong here. There we go. Using the dig command, you can go a few levels deep and get the public key, just like so. And if it, with any luck, if you go and inspect your element of the page, or view source, whatever you want to call it, uh, in the head tag, you should see a new meta tag. I don't have it displaying now. Let's maybe restart the server. There we go. Make sure you might need to start your reserver after adding it if you did already. Cool. So that sets us up to be pretty much ready to rock and roll. Now, uh, for this app, I did want to use Stimulus.js for our JavaScript. You might want to use something else if you're not familiar with Stimulus. I kind of find Stimulus to be less confusing, having heard, learned it a bit. So I'm going to go that route, and I apologize if it's not what you prefer I do, but... To me, it makes sense. So let's go and add one called payment controller. .js. And I'll just copy from like hello controller to get the, the groundwork laid. And we do need to register this. We've got our hello controller registered here. You can delete that if you want to, but I'm gonna just leave it for now. Payment controller, remember to do it here too. Great. Now, if you want to kind of just do this uh, method real quick, 
connect method fires automatically once this is mounted. So we could just say testing one, two, three. Now it won't do anything until you mount it. So we need to go back into our view and do such. So we'll go into our new file. We'll go and inside this section, have a big wrapping containing div. I'll actually render the form up here too. There we go. So this is going to have a lot of data attributes. So we'll start with the data controller of payment. And I'm going to add these all now. Hopefully they'll be a little more obvious once we get into the JavaScript. So payment key value. So you could, you could put the meta key here too. Um, I added it in the head, so maybe we'll derail from that idea. So data payment item value. Now the naming convention here is important with these. Uh, it allows you to pass values through to the JavaScript directly. Rails or Simulus should be able to access it. Booking type ID gives us the item. And we'll say payment token value. Uh, this is a shorthand way of saying the form authenticity token. Uh, it's hard to say. Uh, each Rails form gets this by default, and you can actually access it by uh, using this little helper. So we need this because we're doing a HTTP requests, HTTP requests uh, across the origin, and this will allow us to accept and send params through. Again, this will make more sense as we go, so hang on. Return URL value. This will be root URL. This is a way you can basically get Rails helper methods values down to your JavaScript and, and make use of those, if that makes any sense. All right. Now with elements, we need uh, specific elements to mount to on the page. So Stripe does that in its own specific way. We'll just kind of follow their conventions. And I just want to make the form a little more fancy. First class font bold text XL or the bottom three enter payment details. There we go. So nothing's there yet. Then we'll have a div. This needs to have a payment element. And then I'm going to add a data payment element or payment target of element. Now in stimulus, there's these things called targets and that's essentially a way to query for something on a, in the DOM. Um, it's its own version of that. And the way you can do it is just to simply say data, the name of your controller, in our case, it's payment and then target, and then pass in the thing like you want to refer to, like you can call it element, you can call it whatever you want essentially. And it should allow you to do that without doing the old doc, document dot query selector whatever stuff if you're familiar. We'll do another one called message. And this will just be hidden. It's like if something happens and the card's invalid or something. All right. A lot of setup I know. Uh, but I think that should give us a good ground foundation to get going. Now the next bit, we're going to go straight to the JavaScript and set things up. So what we'll do is first get some L, um, constants, I should say. First, we'll set an instance of elements. That's just going to be what Stripe refers to. I'm kind of going off of their uh, documentation on a lot of this. So um, besides some Rails specific stuff like this. So CSRF token, it's that little token helper we added. So we can either get it by using the value uh, in that form, or maybe we'll simplify this and do it here instead. So we could say const CSRF token, and we'll just do the old school document, get elements 
by name RF token. We're going to get the first element there. And the content since it's a meta tag. So if we want to double check that one, we could say console.log csrf token. See if we get anything back. We do. That's that token there. And if you want to be fancy, it's like test. There we go. So that seems to be working. That's good. And then we would need to set up Stripe, of course, too. So you need an instance of Stripe to make Stripe elements work. So you could do this in many different ways. I'm going to go the old similar may, way as, as we just did here. And remember, we called it Stripe public key. OK, that gives us an instance of Stripe and all of its methods. So console.log stripe. There we go. Gives us a ton of stuff. Wouldn't want to do that, deal with that personally, but here we go. All right, under the controller object, or the class, I should say, let's get those static values. And this is what I referred to in the beginning there. If you refer to, to this file and you see a value at the end, each of these can be piped through uh, just by that naming convention. So you get the the name of the controller after the data, and then call it whatever. And that's how you refer to it to it here. So we'll have an item value here, string, and a return URL. String. You can pass the types through, and then I believe we got a key. Or am I wrong about that? Yeah, I'm wrong. So we don't need that. There we go. So that gives us those to work with. And then finally, we have a static targets, which is an array. You can pass as many one as you want through here. So we have a handful. One's element. Uh, I did add one to the submit form or button form, name, and email. All right, so let's go add those before I forget into the form. So the form will be on the action, it's, or the form itself, we're going to have a data attribute property that's Rails specific. So this is just how you write it in Rails, similar to how we just did in the HTML. So turbo, we'll say false on this form. We don't want to deal with turbo at the moment. And then you can say action. This is another stimulus built in thing where it's based on some sort of interaction you do that triggers something within that stimulus controller JS file. So in our case, we want to listen for a submit event when this form gets submitted. And we can do this little arrow key to signify we're going to call this function in our JavaScript. And then we'll have a payment target form. Now, if you're new to stimulus, and this is all confusing as hell, I apologize. But it is one of those things where if you know it, you know it. Uh, let's see. So we've got data payment target name. Do the same for email. All right. And then last one will be on the input of do, do, do. there's a form submit. So what we could do is tweak this text too. So I'm going to say booking type dot payment required. This will be kind of more obvious. Like when you click the button, you'll know Oh, I am paying for this. Otherwise, you aren't paying for it if it doesn't require cost. Schedule booking for, we'll use our little, uh, what was it? Number two currency. And 
And then if that's not the case, like say you don't require payments, we'll just say schedule booking. I think that's right. Forgot the quote here. There we go. And then class. We need our data attribute here. Payment target will be submit for this one. Cool. I'm going to get rid of these cancel links. I don't really care about those. What I do want to do though is set up these uh, these start at dates. So here, let me just show you visually. So schedule booking for two hundred twenty five dollars. That makes sense. If you go to this one, it's just going to say uh, schedule booking. So we just added that functionality right there. There we go. All right. Uh, before we go on real quick, I want to do a few tweaks on the start at I want to add like a minimum of today so a minimum would be the date today essentially just saying you can't go back in time to have a start at so if you go to the calendar picker you can't go back like purposefully you can only go up to a certain specific time and then end at can honestly be date dot today as well since we want it to be a pretty short window right you wouldn't go too far that's I mean it's relative you don't technically need that but it's something to consider okay and then above that above the grid I want to do if it's a new record we're gonna have like the booking type field and display it in kind of a fancy way so I'll just do if booking dot new record it's just basically if you're not on the new page that's what that means otherwise do something else so we'll say that we'll have a booking type ID here this is how I'm gonna pass it through uh, you could do it differently if you wanted just do it like a parameter we do have it up in the window here so you could totally just save it like we did, um, I think it, did I do that? Yeah, you could do it like on the creation side of things or you could do it in the field like this. I'm just gonna do it like I did in my little demos, but feel free to tweak this. Just say booking type class, label class. And then we'll have a hidden input I like to use regular HTML for these. It's for some reason easier, but we need to name it a certain way so the f Rails knows to accept it. So if you think about the form being submitted, we're submitting a booking instance, but it's going to have a property of booking type ID. So if that doesn't make a ton of sense, if you go down to your controller, it, remember it requires the booking object and then you're permitting these fields. So it's like an overarching class that has these subsidiary things. And that's how that's formatted right here with Rails and how they kind of extract those values. So in the hidden value, this won't even display, but we'll be passing the booking type.id. And we need the at sign there. Okay. And then finally below that, I'll do flex item start some UI around it so class text 3xl font bold margin right 3 and then we'll have the params booking type ah, I already have a closing div okay and so just be like a reminder of what, what they're buying and the color, a little highlight bubble for some flair and we'll set a style, something like that. So you can't like do anything with that. It's just kind of a reminder of what you're buying, kind of just like showing you what's up. 
And I'll do, if we don't do that, then we'll just say else booking dot booking type dot name. And that will be it. Below, above this, I did have booking details. So I added a heading there, font bold, text large, modern, modern three. And just to give it some more uh, obvious stuff to work with there. I think I have something off here. It's like this, this. I need another div, I think. There we go. Right on. Okay, I did one up here too, sorry. I'll copy this. Personal details. This will be a uh, grid. Get rid of these. So in large, it'll be columns of two. Otherwise, it'll be a column of one on small screens. I don't have this full app like super responsive, but yeah, it could work that way. Awesome. OK, so let's work on getting our card mounted. We do need to set up a payment intent uh, for Stripe elements. So that's going to probably be our next step. Uh, to do that, we need to go back to our booking controller. I'm going to set up a new action called intent and you need a post to this and it sends back a private key that you can use in your form there so this is kind of more for security purposes uh, you need something to come from the server to the client as opposed to just setting it up on the client like stripe was used to do uh, so it's kind of certainly more confusing but it doesn't take as long as you'd think um, and it gets easier the more you do it so let's go to routes this one in particular is going to be just one singular route. I'm going to put it just like right here, post payment intent to bookings intent. All right, that gives us the new route and the action here. So let me go and add what's going to be the logic there. So payment intent in our controller. We do have the instance of booking type in our param, so we're able to access that, which is great. So booking type is gonna be booking type find params. Uh, since it's gonna come through as JSON with Stripe, this is how it's gonna look. Um, it's confusing, I know. Then we're gonna set the amount of that booking type because remember I did say that we're saving our, our pricing in like human terms, but Stripe needs to have that price in cents. So we'll take the price, set it to an, a local variable, and then multiply it by 100 to get cents. And then finally, we can set up a local variable of payment intent to equal the Stripe API payment intent dot create amount will pass the amount through uh, currency is required so depending on where you're at you need to set this usd is where i'm at um, there's options for this if you only want to accept cards but stripe gives you this new option to say automatic payment methods and then you could say enabled true then I'm going to set some metadata that gives me a way to know that the booking on the end is coming through and I have some user data to associate it with. Since no one's signed in when they're making their purchase, it's kind of hard to do without sending some data along with your request. So it's one of those things that you might need to address. And I'm wondering, this might be some stale code that I left in. I don't know that I need it, to be honest, but we'll see. 
respond to, we're going to do a, a JSON response here. So the easiest way to do that is kind of this respond to block with Rails. It's kind of just built in. And we'll say JSON and render it kind of in a fancy way. So we'll render JSON. Pass in a client secret, which is what it expects to get. And then we'll get our payment intent variable and pass that through. So kind of confusing. Uh, really recommend reading the documentation. It's confusing too, but I finally figured it out. So that's kind of where that's coming from. All right, so now we're able to post to this endpoint. Uh, we added it to our controller, or uh, yeah, controller and also in the, the routing. Uh, one thing that I know will happen in this case is that we're gonna get an error that the Stripe API key isn't set. So what I'm gonna do is go back to my application controller and just set this for every request. I get sick of setting it up so much that I just do it for all of them. You might wanna do something different for your app, but feel free to follow along if this works for you. So then I'll hook into the gem, set the API key, and then use our credentials. We did the public key before, now we wanna do this private key. I think I called it that. I think it's actually secret key. We'll see if that works. If it doesn't, then it's called something else or I mistyped. It's kind of confusing, but what I wanna do is some async style JavaScript, and you can do that with stimulus pretty easily. You just need to set it up in such a way. Um, we're gonna use a fetch request, which is gonna be a sync await kind of thing. That's newer JavaScript, so it's 100% not clear to me from the start, but I did kind of get the hang of it um, after a little play. Initialize, we're gonna set that method up. And we're gonna get a response and post it to, to our uh, payment intent endpoint and pass it some headers that we need to do for our CRS of token that we set up and then submit uh, booking type ID through so we have a way to access it. So you remember in this controller, we're looking for a booking type right here. It comes back in this format, so we're able to extract it using that parameter. Um, confusing as hell, I know, but let's get started. So we'll say const response equals await. So we're essentially doing some promises here. Fetch, and then we're gonna go to that endpoint. If you try to do this just willy-nilly without the CRS to token, Rails would be like, nope, you can't come that far. So you need to kind of do these workarounds with Rails specifically. There's also Rails UJS, I think that allows you to do the rails.ajax method, which kind of takes care of that for you. Um, I think that's older and you would need to add it to your app, but it's not you know, crucial if you need to do this workaround. It's not a huge deal, I don't think. So remember we added that CSRF token variable in the beginning, right here. Then we're gonna have a uh, content type application JSON, and then go ahead and accept that too. Righto, righto. And then body will be that uh, booking at type ID. So we need to stringify it though. So this is all the shit with JavaScript that's just annoying to me. It's like, just do it automatically. But I digress. All right, so after that, we have the response object. We need to extract the client secret from it, which is getting returned um, in the request. So yeah, it's kind of confusing, but we'll say const destructure that client secret from the await response.json. And then I'm gonna set up to use the Stripe default theme for our payment element. Up here, ants equals, you can set whatever theme, they have a few themes to work with. You can configure it to be custom too if you want to, but not all of us have lo loads of time on our hands. So 
elements equals. Notice we set this up way up here. Already got a little variable set up. Stripe.elements. Then you could destructure those as passed in parameters. So appearance and client secret. Okay. Now you'd think I know what the hell I'm talking about, but I, I kind of don't. This is the documentation I'm more or less following. So keep that in mind. <laughs> so const, we're going to set up our payment element now. And this is going to be elements create payment. I guess you can create more than that. This dot element target. Okay. Now, if you recall in our form, we made an element or not, not in our form in our new, we have this target element right here. And this is what I'm referring to. I'm not doing the Dom get element by ID thing, which you could totally do, but in, in stimulus world, this is kind of the way you kind of query for something. And that gives you that because we've already set it up as a, t a target here. So that's a nice built in thing to stimulus. Uh, I've got some issues. Started post payment intent, booking controller, can't verify CSRF token authenticity. This should be working. So, I may have a typo somewhere. I might need to restart the server. Nope. Doc type is not valid JSON because there's an exception. Oh, I think this might be why. Typo. Oh, okay, still issue. Debugger. Let's see what's going on. If I go, and I'm gonna just do Rails console for now, or excuse me, server. Oh, it should be headers. Still issues. I think I need to do uh, bin dev. Okay. Couldn't find booking without ID. I think we need to do so we've got a post, it's processing intent as JSON, which is working, but there is a record not found booking type without an ID. So what the hell is coming back? Uh, all right, let's see. I'm gonna do Rails server and do a debugger statement. That gives us a way to stop on that intent thing. I just wanna see what's in the params right now. We got nothing. Interesting. Let's double check our item value exists. That's, I've got it right here, this dot item value, but is it rendering? Booking type ID, let's see. We could just view source. Yeah, three. So why would that be an issue? Values, oh, values, okay. Typo. So I, I had values spelt wrong here. Uh, that was dumb. So don't do that. Authenticity. Okay. So we're still getting this crap, which is surprising. Um, oh, cause I set it up, but I forgot to, uh, do the before action. So make sure you do this set stripe key. All right, now it should at least mount, which it does. Sweet. So that's a good step forward. Okay, sorry for that mix up. Let's go back to our code. Now we've set up elements, it is mounted. Now we need to like worry about purchasing. So we've got our initial initialized function, but now I'm gonna make another one called async purchase. This one's gonna um, take in an event. And we're calling this, if you recall, on the submit method on the form. So if you go in the form and payment purchase 
is the actual you know function being called so that's how stimulus can hook into the, those events on the front end and bring them back into the javascript so we'll essentially say event.prevent default because the way i want this to feel integrated like with stripes version they're going to give you a little button version which is like a basic html button but i want our, our rails form to be part of this as well so it needs to be you know like um coinciding with that let me see margin amount of 10 can i do something here i don't know why that works that way personal details all right that's better uh so yeah, back to this. We're going to prevent default on the submit event, which is essentially what's going on when you hit this purchase function. And then I'll just I'm going to set up a couple of other functions below. We'll say set loading is loading, just kind of passing it true or false. And then you can just toggle some stuff. Um, we'll start with, uh, let's see, disable the button and swap text. This kind of gives you some indication something's happening. So we use the submit target, which we already added as a target on the HTML for stimulus. Set it to uh, disabled. Add a little class style change. So opacity 50. And then finally submit element. This is repetitive, but you know, feel free to optimize. Processing. And we could say first, if is loading is true, uh, else essentially the inverse. So paste those down. This could be nicer, but JavaScript's kind of not nice. All right, and then finally, uh, if there's an error with any kind of like card message or something that sometimes comes back, you can display that too. I'll do that real quick. This could be way better as well, but we'll just leave it as is this that message. Target equals, or that class list, remove hidden. Remember we added a hidden class to it already. Then we'll say this dot message target dot text content equals message text, which is whatever you're passing through. And then we'll set timeout on that to just kind of go away after a minute or however long you want, four seconds, I think. So this dot message target a class list dot add hidden back. And then you'll just reset the text as well. So message target. You could just say empty. And then a same for like message text. Yeah, there we go. I think that's all we need. All right, so in the logic of the purchase, we need to do a lot more than that. So we'll say this dot loading or set loading, excuse me, it's true. And then we'll check for errors. So const destructure the error out of the promise that comes back, get our Stripe variable, and then use this method called confirm payment that comes from the Stripe JS library. And we'll pass in the elements and then redirect. I use the fancy one, it's called if required. Normally they want you to redirect, but in my case, I don't want you to, cause this form is, you know, within the page. And in this case, we'll say if there is an error, we'll do if error dot type equals card error, three equals, or error dot type equals validation error do stuff we'll just say this dot show message and then error dot message 
else this dot message show message error um we want to do all that before you like doing the legit work so if error else this dot form target dot submit so we're actually submitting the rails form in that case and then we'll set loading to false All right, element is not defined. So let's see what's up with that. I think it's because it's supposed to be elements. All right, typo. Test user, test user at example. Hello. It's like a cat saying hello, right? Hello. Oh dear. Hey, all right. So stuff happened. That's good. Um, looks like I have a typo here. Uh, index or no, excuse me. Home dashboard booking type form select status options for select. I have a syntax there somewhere. Ah, too many commas. And wrong number of arguments given for expected one to two. I don't know that I closed this. I did not. And all right. So now we're in a pending state for that one. Uh, if you recall on way back when schema, our default state's going to be um, zero. And in the model, I don't know that I said this, but our first one is pending. So any new booking that's created is always going to be pending. And I wanted that to be the case because until we get that A-OK -okay from the webhook from Stripe. Will we go ahead and mark it approved? Um, and then you could it's say the payment failed or something. You could mark it unapproved. So that's kind of a at least a, a path I took. There's probably better ways to do it, but it's essentially where I ended up. So let me uh, oh dear, open that back up. Our controller essentially is good to go, I believe. So um, the main logic's done. Now we need to worry about webhooks. And I've already added my assigning secret to my environment variable. So I recommend you do that if you haven't for the secret credentials. Uh, but essentially we want to add a new controller called webhooks controller. And we're going to listen for events from Stripe once these things happen. So we'll say class webhooks controller application controller and we just want to create method and on this specific controller we want it to bypass some security stuff uh, we're going to say skip before action and we'll say verify I can't say it, authenticity token. We're just going to be accepting events from Stripe, essentially not saving them really. Uh, just kind of uh, digesting them. And then if something comes through that makes sense, we'll do something around that event. Uh, this is straight from the Stripe docs. So maybe there's a better way for Rails specifically, but I left it as is for now. Close requests. ENV, uh, HTTP, Stripe, Signature. This all comes from Stripe. Endpoint, Secret will be our webhook signing secret. So application credentials dot dig stripe. And then I added one that takes the shape webhook signing secret. That's it for short. And then we'll set a nil event variable. Then we'll do a, a 
begin rescue statement kind of thing. So rescue, we'll take the event, hook into Stripe's gem, webhook.construct event, pass in the payload, signature header, and the endpoint secret and JSON parser error. Okay, and then finally we'll do a case statement just going through all the events that you want to subscribe to. So Stripe can send these to a specific URL you have in mind. You do, you'd set that essentially in your account. So I can show you real quick. If you go to webhooks, um, you can have hosted endpoints or local event listeners. And that's what I'm using right now with Stripe Listen on the CLI. So we could fire that up if you want. So Stripe Listen. Uh, actually, before I do though, I'm going to set up my routes in my app. So let's do that. And it's going to be quite simple, just uh, resources, webhooks, and then only create. All right. And then that gives us like an actual URL to tap into to listen. So for grins, I'm going to restart my server so I know it's at least visible by Stripe. And then on the new tab, I'm going to say Stripe listen forward. I think it's flag, two flags forward. Oh man, forward to equals local host for me anyway, 3000 slash webhooks. I think I did that wrong. Okay. So it should spit back your webhook signing secret. I think mine would still work um, that I already have. I don't know if it doesn't, I'll change that off screen. But at this point, our controller can listen for specific events. Um, in my case, I'm going to listen to three different ones. It suggests in the documentation to listen to payment intent dot succeeded, which is the main one. And then when payment intent Processing. So this might be if you're doing like a, a fancy style of payment, like a HCH kind of stuff, um, ACH, like bank to bank. Uh, I haven't really done that personally, so I don't know how that works, but that's a way to signify it. So payment failed is pretty important if you have a bad credit card or something, you want to probably kick off an email to the user. So um, kind of like letting them know and, and certainly not giving them access to whatever they were paying for puts unhandled event type. You could just kind of parse that out. So this one, I'll just do some notes. Feel free to extend this email to user notifying them their payment failed and booking was not scheduled. Be sure to unapprove booking. So it's just the status you could set for it. Maybe not delete the, the record or anything, but send email to user notifying. We are processing their payment and we'll get another reminder or something when payment completes. 
So you might kick off two emails for that. So one to say, hey, we're waiting, and the other one to say, hey, it's good. So send, in this case, you could also send an email. Uh, in my case, I want to find the bookings related to that user that just kind of uh, created that booking. So we'll say user equals user dot find. Um, you can get the event data dot object. It's going to be what's coming back from this payment intent succeeded event type. Um, since we, if you recall, we added metadata, so we did need to add that. I forget. I, I assumed we didn't. We did. So right here, I added metadata when that happened. And that's what I'm going to refer to now. So I'm going to say metadata. This is how Stripes accesses it. And we'll say user ID. So that gives us the user instance. And then we could say bookings equals booking dot where booking type ID equals user booking type IDs. So the booking, when it's created, it saves the booking type ID that it's associated with. And this is allowing us to grab all those types of bookings. And then we're going to narrow it down to the last one. Because more likely than not, the last booking is going to be the one most recent. Um, there's probably a much better way to grab that specific record and pass in some maybe better metadata. But I, I had trouble with this, to be completely honest. So I just went with this route. So finally, I'll say booking dot update customer paid equals true, and then status approved. You could also set status using the enum way, which is just say booking dot approved. I got sick of writing so many lines, so you could just say this if you wanted to. Maybe I'll just do that, but. I'd rather just update everything in one fell swoop instead of that. So that's a quick and dirty way to get that done. Um, now the, there's a use case there where if the person didn't, um, if they booked without payment, like would it still be, you know, pending? And that's kind of one thing you'd probably want to enhance. So you could probably do that on the controller layer. So like if the payment, if the um, booking was created, if booking save, we could say if booking dot, let's see, we need booking type here. Yeah. So in fact, I could just do this, that, save that down. And then I could just say if booking type payment required We'll just say unless end, and then we'll just say booking dot approved in that case. So that's essentially just saying if there's no payment, we're gonna just approve it right away, like because you're not charging for it, so it doesn't make sense to. So if I do create a new booking on the 30 minute one, so if I just say hello, um, Stacy Jones, Stacy. Jones example.com test oh I know why uh, I need to do params booking booking type ID I think I need to go a little bit granular oh, what's what's happening here To. This is why it needs to go to find and then that. There we go. That one was approved. Perfect. So that's about it. So in the webhook side of the equation, we can go and check one more time if that's going to kick things off. I'll do, I'm listening to the Stripe events, so I'll go and try that 60 minute one. All right, if that doesn't work, that means I need to change my key. 
which I will do. That one. Okay. Two four two. Sally Jones, Dumb and Dumber, come on, y'all. All right, schedule. Now, of course, this could be better. Um, same with the calendar view and all that, but there we go. All right, let's try this one more time. I'm struggling to find what's going on. This should be approving it after the webhook fires, but we don't get that. Get the 204 to the ink tent. All right, um, user find event. Is it, do I have this backwards? No, it's right. Event data dot object metadata. Booking where, booking ID, user uh, booking type IDs. That's why it should be bookings dot last. Gotta love it, got to love it. One more try. Give me good, give me good, give me green. <gasps> it worked. Yay, okay, cool. So that one worked, finally. I had an issue, I had typos, as I do. Um, so now we've got our dummy account with webhook events. Uh, if we go to the charge, payment intent succeeded, we should be seeing a webhook get triggered there. Right on. And the payment should eventually have gone through, which it did finally, which is great. Stripe takes their cut, bastards. And that's about it. So I think there's a metadata coming through that's useful. Right on. So some enhancements to make obviously are on the form. You could uh, make sure these are valid fields, you know, like emails should be an email, all those things. I'd, I'd kind of leave that to you. That's kind of foundational stuff. You could also just make sure that um, you have the presence of those things. So maybe we'll add that real quick on the model of booking. We'll just say validates start at, I mean, those, how can you not have those end at booking type ID and then we'll just say presence true. So that'll make sure those needs to be added. Um, I might as well add name and email to, I think, oops, I need to come before presence. Sweet. All right. So if we go back to the other ones, we want to book these. You can still do so. Test user, test user at example.com. Testing. Schedule it. Done. Created. And we'll go to a 60 minute one again. Just to go through all the bases. Right on. Cool. So this, I didn't show you how this could work. If you wanted to, that's in a pending state when that first hits that page. Um, that might be something you could do with like turbo streams or something where it's real time. That's up to you. I'll leave that to you. But in this case, you could go and take this one back to like approved. It'll go add that there. You can go to unapproved. That should give you that third section here and pending if you want it back in pending. So that is my quick little uh, event scheduling app idea. Nothing fancy here. It's more or less Calendly without the calendars. Um, I didn't want to build calendars because those are a pain. Time and dates, those are probably the hardest thing in programming. So I really picked a bad one to try to do here. <laughs> but hopefully that's useful. I, I as, would just iterate that the whole goal is, again, to just be able to like have a publicly shareable link that you could send off and have people schedule time with you with. So that's kind of a way you can maybe create your own if you wanted to. All right, guys, I'll, I'll be sure to have this code in the description as well as a, like a long form article. I tend to write these as well as make these videos. Um, if you have any feedback or questions or anything at all, feel free to leave in the comments and then also give me some, in, some ideas of what you want to see in the future. 
I'd love to hear it. All right. Peace.